This is More Than 5%, a podcast dedicated to covering the stories of women in sports. Whatever the sport, whatever the role, everyone is welcome. Now, let's join our hosts, Zoe Hicks and Carly Jackson, for a weekly conversation with women who inspire. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to More Than 5%. Thank you so much for sticking with us over our little holiday break. Uh, we both thought it was really important to us to unplug a little bit, have some intentional time with our families, uh, really be present and make the most of that holiday time. So thank you so much for listening to our old episodes, for reaching out to us on social media, for connecting with us. We love all of you. So my name is Zoe Hicks. I am one of your co-hosts. I am a former Division One softball player current employee for the Los Angeles Dodgers at their minor league complex, as well as current third baseman for the Baseball Canada Women's National Team. Hi, uh, my name is Carly Jackson. Very happy to be back. Like Zoe said, we had to go out and touch some grass for a little while, see some nature, you know, a little refresh, but very happy to be back. Uh, Like I said, my name is Carly Jackson. My friends call me CJ. I'm a professional ice hockey goalie here in Toronto. I play for the Toronto Six. Uh, I love talking about video games, play a little bit of guitar, and I love talking about sports. Uh, So super happy to be back and excited to get running with our second half of the season. Yes, so second half of the season, new year, new energy to push out those stories about women in sports. Um, We're going to be pushing out a new logo as well, kind of streamline some things, make everything a little bit better. Um, You know, coming at you guys authentically, we love it, so Keep an eye out for that. Keep um, commenting on our stuff, letting us know what you want to see, what you want to hear, all that type of good stuff. Speaking of good stuff, um, it is time for our good shit segment, how we start every single podcast with a little bit of good shit. Just to recap, your brain's always looking for the bad things, always looking for the things to keep you safe, keep you alive, right? But our job is to counteract that with a little bit of good shit, a little bit of positivity. So I'm going to start us off. Might be a little bit more long-winded of good shit than we're used to, but it's been a while, right? So we got to check in, got to check in, you know? So um, myself, I have been in Phoenix back at the minor league complex for a couple weeks. I got re-signed for year two of my contract, so I'm excited to be back. Um, I'm a little bit of a veteran now, so all the newbies will look to me for advice. So I'm excited for that, you know? Um, But yeah, so back for year two, trying to get a little bit more responsibility, trying to work a little bit more in, um, soak up some more information, be a little bit more, you know, involved with the hitting stuff. Um, And then, yeah, push myself into a a different role next year. But yeah, working on that. Um, I got my own place. I have a new apartment, trying to decorate it a little bit right now. That's it. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Uh, Yeah. So I'm back in Toronto. got to spend some time home with family over Christmas which was a huge blessing um had an outdoor game that I got to play which was pretty fun back in my old stomping grounds in Buffalo and pulled out pulled out another dub got to play outside it was pretty sweet uh I'd say that's some good shit and then just happy to be back back with my people uh just spending time at the rink and uh, making the most of of life just having a great great time with my experience and life's good uh I would say Probably one of the most exciting things recently is I've gotten my Toronto Six gear from Vaughn Hockey. Um, I'm waiting on one or two more pieces, but I've gotten my pads, uh, my glove, some sticks, and a chest protector. So being a goalie, I'm just a huge, I'm a huge gear freak. Like I love gear. I love getting new gear. I love all the technology. So I'm just like a kid at Christmas getting to break in and try all this new stuff. And having Toronto Six colors is the sweetest blessing. So. Um, keep an eye out for the new pads because they're shiny. Uh, they have a big bit of gold on them, so they sparkle a little bit in the sun, which is kind of something I'm into. And yeah, I'm gonna wear them this weekend. Awesome! That is some real good shit. Real good shit. Okay, so today's episode is gonna be a little bit different. Um, we took a little bit of time off, but we're coming back at you with some energy. Today's gonna be two parts. Um, so the first part is going to be us kind of recapping what has been going on in the women's sports world for the past couple weeks. What's been the big news? If you've been living under a rock, don't worry about it. We got you. We're going to give you like the the hot points of things that's been going on, ways you can support, all that type of stuff. Part two will be an interview with Claire Eccles. Um, Claire is a teammate of mine on the national team. She's been on the national team for nine years. No big deal. <laughs> no, no big deal. Nine years. Nine Literally years. since 2014. 
Um, so yeah, so excited to have her on the pod. She's also the first woman to pitch in the West Coast League with the Victoria Harbor Cats. Um, so big news yeah, I, there. Yeah, I actually I remember seeing that years and I don't know it was like five years ago. Yeah, and I actually kind of pooped my pants a little bit. I was like, this is sick. Absolutely. Super, super cool. And then <clears throat> I've gotten to meet her and play against her, and I'm like, this. She's unreal. She's nasty. unreal. She's like, nasty oh. lefty pitcher. Like, how do you how do you hit that? So I uh, I'm pumped to have her on the show. I just so excited to pick her brain like absolutely so yeah so we have claire coming on uh the second part of this episode she also has a current role with canada soccer uh so she can talk about that on you know both sides of both sides of her like professional life as well as her personal athlete accomplishments uh just being involved with two high level national teams and national programs so excited to have her on we'll chat with her in part two of this episode part two will be available immediately after part one so we're gonna drop one and two right at the same time so yeah that's what we got going on today we're going to hop right into it because a lot of stuff has been going on in the women's sports world. First, and I would say like the most impressive thing that I'm excited about is the World Cup is coming up, right? So the World Cup opener was moved due to increased ticket demand. So FIFA said that it was an unprecedented event that happened. Like think Taylor Swift concert tickets, but for soccer, like they didn't know what to do because there were so many people wanting tickets. There was so much going on, like so much traffic on the website like it crashed like all this stuff right australia was supposed to play ireland in the opening game of the tournament and they were supposed to play at the sydney football stadium which holds forty five thousand five hundred, right decent size right forty five thousand people at a game is not not bad right yeah, larger cool. larger than any crowd i've ever played in front of but um they moved it to stadium australia which holds eighty three thousand five hundred people eighty three thousand five hundred people that's how many people want to go watch this women's soccer game so that's huge news, and I love that. Love that very much. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> pretty fucking big deal. <laughs> like, and just to literally, like, FIFA, the largest soccer organization in the world, to call it an unprecedented incident that so many people wanted to come to this event. Like, I, FIFA. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just think that arena is going to be bumping. Like, Absolutely. I think I just, soccer in general is like a party. When you go to a soccer oh, game, it's like you are oh. signing up to lose your voice, jump up and down, like scream, sing, all that type of stuff. Soccer fans are nuts. Like nuts. But it, it, I mean, in a very impressive way, in my eyes, I'm like, y'all are crazy, but I love it. I could just imagine being in that arena. It's going to be insane. 83,500 people. I can't even count that high. That's ridiculous. Uh, fact. Fact. Okay, I do want to take a second to explain the situation happening with the Canadian women's national team for soccer. Um, so on Friday, the governing body announced that they will be cutting funding ahead of the 2023 World Cup for the Canadian women's national team. Um, this means that they're going to have less players invited to camp, uh, less staff available for them to prepare, uh, stuff like that. So definitely a negative situation that they're stepping into on the way to the World Cup in 2023. Uh, the World Cup is set to be hosted by by Australia and New Zealand, July 20th to August 20th of 2023. Um, so the team currently is in Florida preparing for the She Believes Cup, which then will prepare them for the World Cup. So the women's team, in response to this funding cut, uh, went on strike, said they were not going to play until the disparity in pay and funding was fixed. Canadian soccer then came back to them, threatened to take legal action against the players, saying that this strike was unlawful, threatened to, you know, go into a lawsuit, all that type of stuff. So the women decided to go back on the field to play, but to play in protest. Um, they took to the pitch in unbranded gear and inside out practice kits, refusing to show the Canada logo in protest for the unfair treatment. This is coming to a team that had just won the Olympics in Tokyo in 2022. As they're preparing for, you know, one of the largest women's soccer events in history um, in the World Cup and coming off a very popular men's World Cup for Canada as a whole. So Canada soccer has never been more popular. Um, and this is definitely painting them in a bad light in the media. Um, we as Canadian athletes stand with the Canadian women's soccer team. Um, we believe in equal pay. So that's the situation unfolding in front of us as we speak. Uh, we will continue to update you on that situation. But yeah, negative, negative situation all around for Canada soccer. Um, if you don't know about our podcast network head Gianna Belcastro runs the Women's Sports Matter podcast very similar to what we do uh, interviewing athletes talking about what's going on in women's sports um, covering conventions drafts stuff like that like big events 
uh, to do with women's sports. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go check that out. Awesome coverage. Especially if you're a soccer fan. They do a great job with all the coverage. I've learned a lot um, just following their channel and and, uh, their personal channel as well. I mean, a big fan. Definitely getting into the soccer scene a little bit more. Um, But yeah, I mean, more women's sports, the merrier. Speaking of more women's sports, um, we are in the WNBA free agency time right now, which has been absolutely insane. If any, if you followed it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The new and notable items on the WNBA docket are the basically the creation of two super teams, right? Like, oh tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. I love this. No, I love this. I love that the WNBA is entering the super team era. Like, oh, I absolutely. just I want to see these players play together. I want to like, see. I want to see the matchup. So right? what we have is um, Brianna Stewart went to New York from Seattle. Um, they posted a video and they called like called it Stu York. And I think there is so much potential for content and for merch and for like radio shows, for talk show. Like Stu York is gonna about to be like off the charts. So I'm excited right. about that. Like that's insane. That's genius yeah. and insane. So yeah, so Brianna Stewart is with New York. Um, Candace Parker signed with Vegas as if Can Vegas needs help. John Cole Jones is also going to New York. Are you kidding? We established the two super teams just for fans who may not know. Yes, true. Sorry. Super teams will be, well, this is just the prediction. Like, obviously, the other teams still have work to do and there's still free agent signings to happen. But the prediction will be Vegas, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, the Las Vegas Aces, who are the defending champions, they just won in 2022. Uh, very dominant, a very dominant run, a very dominant performance to the WNBA title. Uh, they have Kelsey Plum, Asia Wilson, uh, Chelsea Gray, Jackie Young, added Candace Parker. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Chicago is reeling. Um, I would say Seattle obviously is reeling right now because they just lost their their best player in Sue Bird to retirement as well as Brianna Stewart to free agency. So I think Seattle has some work to do to be able to be, you know, competitive. I think that Chicago also has some work to do because they lost. Uh, yeah. Vander- I like Chicago too. Um, so yeah, Chicago also lost Vandersloot and Quigley basically at the same time. So Quigley announced that she's going to be sitting out 2023 and not playing anywhere. Um, so she's not signing. And so her wife, uh, mm-hmm. Vandersloot signed with, New York. So add yeah. another piece of the puzzle up there in New York. I think I might be a Liberty fan. I might be um, ordering my jersey online. I've always been a Sabrina Ionescu fan from Oregon. I might just have to jump ship, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Um, so yeah, big news in the WNBA. I think that it's that's what it boils down to. It's going to be two super teams. It's going to be Vegas and New York in the, in the finals. I think it's going to be a big storyline throughout the entire year because that's basically where everybody went to. And how perfect is it that they're in opposing conferences yeah true i mean and and, I, my prediction is we're gonna see two teams absolutely dominate and, and like opposing coasts too it's like the yeah. you know you can look at you can look at any storyline you want to like the new york city storyline whatever versus like the vegas like you know, storyline the West, beast in the east all yeah. that situations i think there's lots yeah. there's lots going on with that well i'm i'm going for aces my prediction is the aces of course barf go with the go with the the obvious choice well i mean seriously if you think about it like they have like an all-star six when you only can have five people on the court at one time yeah which is i (laughs) i don't know how you can go wrong with that i don't know what's going on i saw this tweet the other day that was like Mm -hmm. what do you mean how can you guard that like it's super easy you just double team this person and have three people on this person and you just cycle back to this person and like by the end of the tweet you would have had to have eight people on the court for them to be able to like play defense on this team so i thought it was kind of funny to see like oh this is your answer just like illegally play three more people on the court and then i think you'll be fine i think you'll be okay like that's hilarious Mm -hmm. anyway uh moving on to the phf increasing their salary it doubled again. It's okay. increased 900% um, in the past three years. So that's also happens to be since the year I started uh, playing professionally in the PHF. Uh, so the salary cap is now up to $1.5 million, um, which, if my math is right, is that that is actually the highest salary cap in women's sports right now. Um, I know the WNBA is up there as well. They do have a bit of a smaller roster size compared to the sport of hockey, but $1.5 million per team... That's a lot of cash to be able to to deal to players, to provide a living wage, to 
be able to play hockey full time. The WNBA salary cap is $1.42 million. So PHF has the crown for sure. I mean, this is a huge, huge step in women's sports. And especially being a player in this league, it's pretty exciting to to see that dream become a reality and players get to do their sports every day without having to offset it with other activities or other jobs and covering costs. We, we're going to have full-time athletes all the time, all year long, and it's freaking huge. And the thing I'm so excited for is how much the product is going to continue to improve. Like, I've just seen this league get better every single year, um, top to bottom. So to see all these resources, these people being supported uh, financially so they can do the things they need to do, the product is just going to keep getting better. So it's just super exciting as a player. It's super exciting as a fan. I mean, the PHF, women's sports, it's up and coming. At this time, this is his personal opinion, but this is the best time to invest. Women's sports is only going to become more valuable. It's only going to grow. And this is just the beginning. I just looked it up. Um, I think it's, it's, hu- like it's huge. It's huge for women's sports in general to have professional athletes in an entire league that that's all they have to do. Like people talk about all the time, like, oh, well, if you play a different sport like tennis or like golf, you can be a pro athlete and that can be your number one thing. Like, oh, if you're a CrossFit athlete, you get enough sponsorships, you can blah, 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 right? This is a league. This is a team sport. This is everyone across the board making enough money to not have to have a side hustle, to not have to have an off-season job, to not have to worry about where their meals are coming from or how their bills are getting paid because, you know, they're born, they were the wrong gender when they were fucking born. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, we talk about this all the time off mic, but in my, in my occupation of working with male professional baseball players, everything they do, everything they focus on is to become the best baseball player they can be. They don't have to focus on school. They don't have to worry about shit. Like, everything is handled for them, right? They're nutrition, their stretching programs, their recovery programs, their lifting programs, their hitting, like all that shit is handled. Their focus, their number one focus is to be the best baseball player that they can be, right? And so you look at that product and how that shows on TV of like, you know, the Bryce Harpers being ridiculously good, the fucking Aaron Judges hitting home runs, like you can't even count them. Like you look at that product and you look at the product that is WPF, like pro fast pitch in America. You look at AU Pro Sports. You look at, you know, WNBA. You look at the PHF. Like that product is an insane product to watch already. Could you imagine that you take away all the distractions from all of the players? Everyone in the entire league is just focused on doing Mm -hmm. what they do best, like playing hockey, like playing basketball, playing whatever. Like you take away all that other shit, like even the time commitment and the stress of it all. It's gone mm. out the f- out the window. All mm. you have to worry about is sleeping eight hours a night and showing up to be told what to do at your facility. Like mm-hmm. one, one of the baseball guys that I work with made a joke the other day. He's like, yeah, well, they don't pay us to be smart. I'm like, absolutely fucking right. They don't. Your job is to show up and do what you're told and it'll get you better. Right. Obviously, like you're going to take take ownership of your training and all that type of stuff. Right. But like there there's no extra thinking to it. Everyone is doing their job to make you better. Everyone that I work with, our job is to make our athletes better. Everyone that I encounter, the job is to make the players better. Like, can you imagine the women, women's sports becoming that also? Of like these athletes, the only, the only goal that they have. They don't have to worry about sponsorships. They don't have to worry about anything. They don't have to worry about bagging groceries in their off season. Their job, their job is to get better at their sports. Like, could you imagine how, how leaps and bounds the sport is going, like how much better it will be? Just because, like, your one job, this is what you do. You sleep, you play your sport. Like, that, I, it blows my mind. No, for real. It's, 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 it's just going to explode. It's going to absolutely explode. And I think the whole culture around women's sports, and I think you can talk to almost any female athlete at any level, any sport, any age. And I like to believe this is true in, in all sports across the board. But the reality is for women competing in sports, it's never been about the money. It's never been like, oh, yeah, I'm playing my sport. I'm practicing this craft to make millions of dollars one day and, you know, retire. It's never been about that. And it'll be interesting to see if that does come into play now that it's exploding and what kind of motivations we see from different athletes. But to see in the current where we are right now, to see these athletes who have played the game for so long for the pure love of it, for the pure, I want to keep playing because I love it. Or I want to keep playing because this is fun. 
Yeah, and they're finally getting like, the financial gain of it. Exactly. And not even and financial gain. Like, they're not making millions of dollars. Like, there's no multi-million dollar contracts. Like, the money good. is to survive, but, mm-hmm. like, there's it's still financial gain. It's better than what they're used to. It's better than what we used to have. Like, we're growing on it. But it, it's, yeah. Like, I say financial gain in a way of, like, you know, paying the bills. Like, there's yeah. no Ferraris. There's no, like, six-car garages. Like, don't come for me. I get it. Financial gain is very relative but, but it's continue career. it's a full-time career it's yes. like i am a hockey player and all these other per- things about my personality but it's not i'm a hockey player and this and that yeah. and that, and that's what i need to do in order to keep this dream alive yeah. it's like no i'm living the dream and i'm living in the dream all the time you know it, there's still freedom for people to practice other um yes. crafts and hobbies that they enjoy but to not have to rely on the skill sets yeah. in other areas in order to survive as a human being and to devote all that time and energy and love with the resources you need to yeah. to be a human being and to be a successful athlete, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and I think just the validity of little girls growing up and saying, I want to be a professional athlete mm-hmm. and people being like, well, get a real job. You know, like if you ask an eight-year-old boy and say, hey, like, what do you want to, I want to play in the MLB. I want to mm-hmm. play in the NFL. They're like, oh, good for you. Like, keep working, right? But you say like, if a little girl says the same thing, it's like, ah, oh, you have to get a real job. That doesn't make real money, blah, blah, blah. It finally will. It it's finally so- will. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it will finally be, okay, all right. Like, you can do that. You can make a living doing that. You see a boy, a little boy and a little girl, and they say the same thing. Oh, I want to be a professional athlete. There should mm-hmm. be no difference in response mm-hmm. now. Like, none. There should be absolutely none. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Right, you know right. What did you say? <laughs> You're right. Absolutely. I am right. So I have a podcast to tell everyone how right I am all the time. Also, hot take on something that you just said. Um, so you said like, oh, it'll be interesting to see if there's anyone who's in it for the money. Anyone who mm-hmm. plays for the money. I think that's great. To be mm-hmm. so honest with you, I think to have room for women in sport, we have to have room for all women. Mm-hmm. Like there are people who don't like certain women who are in major league baseball because they're, you know, looking for accolades or this, that, and the other thing there, you know, try- there are men that do that. Also, there are men that climb the ladder as fast as they can because they want to get, you know, the trophy at the end of the road. There are mm-hmm. men like that also. So yeah. to really have space for women in sport or women in any Avenue, like women in marketing, women in anything, like women in any point of power, there has to be room for all women, mm-hmm. all women at all times. Like the social climbing women, the like accolade, like just searching for accolade women, like there has to be room for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Like just because you're a woman in baseball doesn't mean you have to fit in this little box, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to be this type of person. You don't have to be super outgoing. You don't have to be super quiet. There has to be room for everybody. So the fact that it's like, there might be people just in it for the money. Awesome. That means there's space for everyone. There's Mm -hmm. space for, you know, introverts, extroverts. There's space for... The high energy people, low energy people, like there's space for everyone in that, in that area. And I love that. Like, I love that so much. And I, I have to defend that a lot of the time because people in my profession don't like when women are certain things. I think that's just general, right? People don't like when women are bossy. People don't like when women are bitchy and you're like, Mm -hmm. but men are also that there is a absolute counterpart of that in this space so there has to be room for all of it i'm catching your drift speaking of space for everyone i want to talk about the sam kerr and christy muis photo shoot because yeah. it literally ripped my heart out of my body i when i tell you i'm obsessed with them as a couple i'm obsessed with them as a couple i love them so much and i love how much attention they gain as individuals as well as a couple like they're both insanely good at what they do. They're both insanely good soccer players. Like they're both playing for their respective national teams. Like that's ridiculous, right? Talk about a fucking power couple, right? And the fact that there is space and that their higher ups push that as well. Like they're 
the people who oversee what they do allow them to be themselves wholeheartedly fully like there's no pressure from anyone around them to like you know fit into a stereotype or be this type of person or you know keep it off the field or that type of shit like they're allowed to be authentically themselves in every area and every space and i love that and i think that's why women's sports is such an incredible place and like such an inclusive place because there's room for everyone there's literally room for everyone whatever you look like whoever you love wherever you come from like everybody and I think you can talk about that in the PHF, like specifically with one very famous PHF couple. Oh yeah, the Packers. Oh my God. <laughs> you you scroll once through the Riveters Twitter or Instagram feed and you'll see Anya Packer everywhere. Mm-hmm. Right? And like their little boy, their little kiddos. Like I love they're, that. No, they're beauties. And it's like it's super cool. So for fans who don't know about the well, I'll give you the brief synopsis of the relationship here so Anya Packer um former professional hockey player and now is a PHF but used to be the NWHL played for the whale uh Connecticut whale and Madison Packer played for the Riveters uh so these two athletes played against each other and ended up um getting married and having two kids together and it's just That's really so really it's so gay it's That's so, so gay. gay and I love that so, so women's sports it's awesome like <laughs> it's just such a cool story and Kind of speaking to, you know, the power couples in women's sports, I think it's incredible how just inclusive and like celebratory and loving and authentic they just express themselves and how the organization supports them with the Riveters. I just think it just creates more inclusive space for people and to just share that happiness and their kids are so adorable. Little baby way going to all the games. My God, I love. And all this merch, (laughs) all of his 14 merch is so cute. I could die. I could die. But like just allowing, not allowing that, but like showing up as your authentic self, right? Mm -hmm. Allows others to do the same. Mm -hmm. Like if you show up as a goofball, just like singing, dancing, whatever, it then makes everyone calm down a little bit. And you're like, oh, like they're super weird. I can also be super weird. Showing up as you in every space and not like, you know, slowly warming up or whatever. Like I get different personalities, whatever, but showing up as you, showing up as who you are at all times allows others to do the same the freedom the safety like they now just like have that weight lifted of like oh cool this is okay all right like you know what I mean it's hard to explain and I don't think I did a great job of that but like just allowing everyone wherever they're at whatever whoever they are wherever they're at whatever allowing everyone a space showing up with an authentic energy and just it's not necessarily about having the qualities of extra being extroverted or being confident or being loud like I don't necessarily think that those things create an authentic space I think that's part of it if that is who you are but I think just people that are very comfortable in their own skin or are just like hey this is what I have to give today and yeah yeah okay it's it's that piece with who you are is a contagious energy and it encourages other people to do the same and I think that is such a fun space to be in as a person I just think that that just creates a lot of comfort and space to be yourself Absolutely. Which it's is like, the most freaking powerful thing in the world. That's why I love women's sports. Mm-hmm. And I think I think you're seeing it. You're slowly seeing it in, in male sports now mm-hmm. of, you know, more people coming out, of, you know, more pride games. But you still have that pushback, which I think sucks so much more. Like, mm-hmm. if you're a queer person on a team and you have a pride night and one of your teammates goes, I'm not wearing that. I don't support that. Mm-hmm. You're, in essence, saying... I don't really support who you are as a person. You know what I mean? Like, that's tough. How do you then continue to show up authentically in response to that? Like, how, how, like, how hard is that going to be? Essentially very hard. I was on an MLB Zoom the other day and Mm -hmm. Billy Bean is with the diversity, equity, and inclusion group within the MLB and he's an out gay man. And so he, he told us a story about when um, he was playing Major League Baseball He heard so many people using the anti-gay F word. He was like, this space is not for me. He walked away from baseball. Mm -hmm. He was like, this is not a space where I feel comfortable and I can thrive. And walked away from it and realized how much he missed the game and how much those things don't matter. Like, baseball is not about that. Baseball is, you know, for everyone at all times, blah, blah. But he heard so many people using that language that he was like, oh, shit. This is not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not supposed to be here. Imagine how that would mess with you as a human being. Oh, my God or whatever your whatever your job is right imagine going to school every day going to teach going to practice music or yeah. whatever it is and somebody's yeah. 
chirping in your ear all the time, just calling you all these slurs and negative yeah. comments. Yeah, like imagine that mm-hmm. as a human being having to combat that and deal with that and everybody's the biggest critic and you have for to, something you can't control exactly right and like, you have to step off of that field out of that office out of that building or whatever and kind of set those things aside like that's not an easy thing to do at mm-hmm. any point and I, I just think that's why inclusion is so important yes I don't have all these fuckers. just be nice be because. a good human being I just I I don't I don't understand how it's so hard but then again, like some people struggle with it. I don't know. Some people are just garbage people. I don't know. I don't know. Be kind. Be kind. Uh, but anyway, um, Super Bowl, Eagles, Chiefs, right? Mm-hmm. First time two black starting quarterbacks will play in a Super Bowl ever, which is huge, especially in February, which is Black History Month. I think it's just perfect. Stars aligned. Um, also, on that note, Autumn Lockwood will be the first black female to coach in the Super Bowl. She is an assistant coach with the Eagles, so that is another major thing. If you're not a football person, just tune in just for Autumn and for Rihanna, of course. Duh. Um, but yeah, that's also huge. Um, also, something we wanted to highlight on this pod is just like, Autumn doing huge things in sports, um, just, you know, doing her thing. Like, she's obviously a badass, knows football like nobody's business. She's about to go win a Super Bowl. I'm cheering for the Eagles for that reason. Yeah, I was going to say, I guess I'm betting on the Eagles. <laughs> go Jalen Hurts. Cool. So Bye. My- so- no, so that, that is the end of our part one episode. Uh, welcome back to More Than 5%. Um, we are happy to have you. Thank you for continuing to listen to our pod. Um, reach out to us on social media, connect with our community. Uh, we love you so much and check out part two. Also, if this is your first time listening to our episode, check back to our old episodes. There's gotta be something there that will resonate with you. Uh, we've talked to a lot of amazing people and, uh, women in sport about their experiences. And I'm sure there's something to learn about something in there somewhere. You know, we probably found a nugget of wisdom in the grass lucked into it anyway this upcoming half of our season we have some big guests coming on we have olympians we have ceos we have trailblazers in their sports uh really excited to have these people on to talk about their experiences and to share with you all about you know what they learned and maybe you can pick something up from them also um follow us on instagram at more than five pct and be a nice person be kind Okay, cool. Check out our episode with Claire, and we will talk to everybody next time. Peace. Peace and love. <laughs>